Hi then, Dyke. I hope this can help you. I'm not sure if it will. Um, but if I've understood your cor question correctly, um, hopefully it will help you. Let me know if something doesn't make sense um, or if there's any other questions that you have. So as far as I understand it, you have a central structure that you can't take measurements in the middle because of the terrain. And so you want to do radial traverses going out from it. And so you need lat long coordinates so that you can set up your grid in your GPS so that you know where to go. So a crude way of doing this, we can try now. Um, uh, I'm not sure if it'll be accurate enough for you. You can just let me know about that. Okay, so safest thing to do, if you do have like elevation data for the area, that would be great. Um, just to be able to visualize it and to pick your points off of it. This is actually gravity data over the Tromsberg anomaly in South Africa. But it's just to give you the general idea of how it would work. So try and load your gravity, your elevation data into Geosoft. And then we're going to create a new database. So go database, new database. Let's give your database a name. Click on the three arrows, I always click on my three dots just to check where it's saving it. Um, uh, I'm just going to create a folder called test, but, um, or oh, let me actually put your name so that I spell it right. I hope I do, just in case you ask more questions. D Y C K E. Okay. And I'm going to call this database here um, grid. Because I'm gonna, this is gonna be my grid that I'm gonna use in my field. Maybe I'll do underscore GPS. I try not to leave any spaces in the name just in case. Click on save. I'm gonna leave the default settings because it's not gonna be too big. Click OK. Something else that you need um, that will help in this exercise is try and make sure that your grid is in UTM. You can see when I put my mouse on the grid, in the bottom right here it says UTM zone 34 south. Don't have it in lat long because in your answers will come out here in lat long and we actually want them in meters, uh, mainly because we want to set the grid spacing. Give me a shout if you don't know how to convert this grid from, GS, uh, to, from geographic to UTM. Super easy. I can put a tutorial for you online. Okay, so we're going to do this in a crude way. Hopefully it's fine. If you need it to be more accurate, let me know. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go grid and image, utilities, and grid profile. So you can actually draw a profile on the map and it'll extract the values there. And even though it's going to extract gravity values, I'm really just interested in the X and Y values it's going to extract. So I'm going to click gravity profile. It asks you what grid do you want to get the values from. It really is not important unless you need to know the elevation values. You could maybe choose your elevation grid here. Um, not super important, but let me, I'll go here to elevation. Also give me a shout if you're not sure how to get elevation data. I use eTopo data, uh, which you can download for free online. I think it's only got a, res a resolution of like 90 meters. So it's not great. If you've got better local um, topo of the area, that would be helpful. So let's, you just need to make sure there's a number here. So a line number. And your method here, I want it to be digitized from map. And then most important, sample interval. Now you have to answer this question. How often do you want to sample? Um, uh, is it gravity? If it's gravity, maybe you're only going to do every 10 or 20 meters. Is it magnetics and you've got a walk mag and then I'm sure it'll sample quite often. But I'm assuming that if you've got a separate GPS unit, um, it's not a walk mag. So your choice, it also depends on the memory of your GPS. If it can't load too many points, you don't want to make this value too small. For now, let's put in 10 or let's maybe do 15 because what happens is you can pace out 5 meters. If, for example, you're using um, a magnetometer and you want to record every 5 meters, you can pace out 5 meters, pace out another 5 meters, and then your GPS will have arrived at the third set of 5 meters. It would have arrived at that point. But if you've got tons of memory, you're welcome to make this smaller. Click OK. And let me just talk about the units here. Sample interval 15. This will be the units of your map or your grid. And our grid is already UTM and it's in meters. So this is 15 meters. And this is where the problem lies if your grid is in lat long because then this is 15 degrees and that causes a problem. So you need to get your grid into meters. Let's click OK. Enter the point on the profile. So where's our start point? Right button when done 
escape to cancel. Now what that means, click OK. I'm going to start wherever you think you're going to start your profile. I'm going to click there. I'm, with my left mouse button, I'm going to drag out a relatively straight line as far as you think it might be. Um, you can, if you want, check beforehand. I'll show you how now, how far you want to go. Um, I'm not sure how long you want your profiles to be. I'm going to left click again to end the profile and I'm going to right click and go done. And as soon as I do that, actually line one appears in my database next to it and you can see it even shows topography data. How long is this line? There's two ways we can measure that. Now click for me on your database, go to map tools, go line path. And now this is going to plot this as a line. Let's click OK. OK. And there's your line. How you can measure the distance is you right click on your screen, go ruler, click at the beginning and click at the end. And you'll see in the bottom right hand of your screen, it says 63,000. So that's 63 kilometers, which I'm assuming is much further than you want to go. So what you could actually do if you want to get rid of that, just click done. When you first see this map, you could actually see, okay, I want to do a five kilometer profile. I'm going to right click here, go ruler, click at the beginning of where you think you'll start. And five kilometers is about there. So it's quite small. So um, it's because this anomaly is very large, but you just need to use your data and just check what is best. Okay. And now we're just going to do that several times. So I go grid and image utilities grid profile important thing to remember is change one to two because if you leave it the same it's going to write over your data click ok click ok and let's um you can either just go north south east west or if you want to do the infill points um like i said this is a very crude method because i'm using my eye to approximate what angle to go out at um, I don't know how accurate you need to be. Does this need to be at 45 degrees? Then it'll take a bit more effort figuring it out. But if you can just do it visually, then that's the easiest way. I'm going to click again on the screen, left click to end it, right click done. And you can see here it's added line two. Um, I don't know how much you know about databases. If you want to go back, click over here in this top left corner, right click list shows you your lines already. So if I wanted to go back to one, I just click on one. Now it hasn't plotted it out for me. You don't have to plot it. You can do it all at the end, but I'm going to plot it again just so that I can see where to put my next line. I don't want to put it too close. Click on my database. So it's selected. Go map tools, line path. I'm not going to change anything. Click OK. It's plotted it for you. OK, so I'm going to go through doing that now. And it should work. I'm going to change it to three. Click OK. Click OK. Click wherever I want to start. Click near the end. Right click done. OK. And you can plot that one out. Um, you can be as accurate as you need to. I'm going to just do it quickly so we can see our end product. Done. And so you can actually do this to do as many lines as you want, as many lines as you have the time and energy to do. Um, something else you can do if these are too long, just do them at first randomly freehand, and then you can actually go to the database later and delete rows if there's too many rows. I'll show you now how to do that. Six. Almost finished. Going out. Two more to do. And the last one. Um, also, if you're not sure where to start it, um, you might actually want to zoom in a bit more to better understand what your values are. Like, is the topography too harsh here? Um, if you need to check topographic values, I'm not sure if you know, you put your mouse on the screen, right click, go grid values, choose the name of the grid in case you've got a few of them, click on it, click on that location, and again in the bottom right hand of the screen, it gives you a value, excuse me, there. Mine says minus 122 because this is gravity, but 
excuse me, you will get topographic values and you can have an idea if that's a good place to start. So you can actually do this check before you plot and uh, start any of your lines. So now I've finished all my lines. I'm going to go map tools, line path, OK. And it's actually plotted all of them going out. So now you can add more if you would like. I'm going to check what the distances are along these profiles. How you do that, you go database tools, channel tools, go down here, make distance channel. What are your X and Y values? These have to be in meters to be able to calculate distance. And then here, output channel, it's automatically going to call it distance. And I'm going to click OK. If it, nothing appears, don't panic. Click on a blank heading, right click, list, click on distance, click OK. And so this is in meters because you used X and Y that were in meters. Scroll down, you can see this is a long line. And so if I click on my database, it actually shows you where you are on the map. You can see um, as I click on the data, the crosshair over here is moving. Another thing, maybe you want to look at the topography along the line. Click on this heading, right click, show profile. Only works if just the heading is blue. If the whole column is blue, it doesn't work. You just need to click a few times until just the heading is blue. So this is your topography. So maybe you're not happy with this whole, you're not going to do this, this part here because um, it's too long. So easiest thing, you can actually scroll through your data and do this and go from maybe you want to go up here from distance 20. Maybe 20 kilometer line is more than enough. Click here, and you actually need to click on the value here in this first column, it's just this number value, drag down, click shift, and all of them are highlighted, right click, delete rows. And you say delete, yes, and it's just going to give you this. This is your shortened profile. If you want to replot it, you just right click on the screen here, go rescale all, it stretches it out. So don't be confused by my data. This is gravity, that's why it's a bit wrong. Um, so yeah, give that a try. Give me a shout if it didn't make sense or if you need to convert um, your coordinates from geographic to, uh, to UTM.